I'm Kevin Elizabeth and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about vendor referrals. So if you brides are seeking referrals from your planners or your photographers or whoever it may be, I'm going to be describing at least how I figure out who to recommend to brides. Um, now I will say that vendor recommendations can either be very basic, like sending a generic list that you always send or very personalized. I personally like to give the more personalized vendor recommendations, but it does take time. So I can't really be giving these out to brides who haven't booked me left and right. It's just too much time. Sometimes I have couples who just suck my time dry and then don't hire me. So I have to be a little bit more careful. So don't expect vendors you have not hired to bend over backwards and find people that are exactly the perfect fit for you. But here is essentially how I do figure out how to give out my vendor referral. So first off, the vendor has to have beautiful work. That is a given. I am not going to refer somebody whose work I don't like or whose work I don't think photographs well. The second one is if that vendor does a good job for their clients and if they are nice and wonderful to work with. So if I have a florist who goes above and beyond for their clients, I'm going to really think about that florist the next time I'm giving out recommendations. If I have a planner who really goes above and beyond for their clients, they're definitely going to hit my referral list. Now as a photographer, you might think it's mostly a planner instead that's giving out more vendor recommendations, but I actually have a lot of brides hire me who only have their venue booked and don't have their planner yet, don't have their florist, hair and makeup, whatever. Um, so I am giving out a lot of recommendations to my brides to help them find a team that's going to do beautiful work and who's going to be pleasant to work with and really goes above and beyond for the clients and for me is pleasant to work with. Now the third one is if they are good at email communication. I do not like sending my brides to a vendor who takes two weeks to respond to emails, even a full week unless they are on vacation. I find that a lot of artists in the wedding industry don't feel like they should be emailing very quickly, um, when in reality, a lot of couples these days value somebody who is on top of their email game. So for me personally, I try to respond to all brides within 24 to 48 hours, unless it's the weekend. And the weekend I try to take off as much as possible, but I'm not gonna send my clients to somebody who is going to frustrate them or make them feel anxiety because they won't hear back from them. So if you're a vendor watching this, um, just know that it is important. I know we all have things going on in our lives. Some people have children, some people have other jobs, some people are super busy. You need to find a solution that is going to let you be on top of your emails so that you don't lose out on a client or lose out on a referral because you are too slow over email. So that's just a personal preference for me. Um, another thing is if the vendor is good about being on time, they're good about um, just pretty much being great on the wedding day and being seamless. They're not always running late. They're not pushing the photos back because they're not finished with their work. I don't wanna be waiting on other people when they should already be done. So that's something I keep in mind. Um, a lot of hair and makeup artists are so, so late. The people I recommend are never late. They're usually early. Um, every time I've ever worked with a hair and makeup artist who ran late, I did not know who they were. Um, it was never somebody I referred. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, now, when it comes to more so personalizing these vendor referrals, what I like to know from my brides once they've booked me is what other vendors they still need. I wanna know a general idea of style and I want to know their budget without having a budget. And I know sometimes brides don't like to share that information, but if I don't know a bride's budget, I don't know if I should send her to a florist whose minimum is $8,000 or whose minimum is $3,500. I don't wanna waste the vendor's time and have them be upset with me. And I don't wanna waste my bride's time. So by being open and forthcoming about your budget when you're seeking referrals, you are going to make your vendor search process so much more efficient. You're not gonna waste your time and it's just gonna be great for everybody all around. So I want my brides to tell me, do you want more natural lush flowers? Do you want more traditional flowers? Do you like a lot of color or do you like a lot of neutrals? Cause I have some friends who really love color and they excel at it. And I have some friends who just hang out in the neutral zone. So for me, that's so important to know because I'm not going to send a bride who loves traditional ball shaped 
ivory and blush floral arrangements with a budget of $3,000 to my friend who has a minimum of $5,000 and does really natural organic arrangements with tons of color. That just would not make any sense. If you're asking for recommendations, just go ahead and tell the person you're asking what your budget and style preferences are and they will try to find somebody who's a good fit. Now, if my bride has not developed her budget for that category yet, which I think you should know your budget for everything before you reach out to vendors, um, I will simply give them a list of a couple of my favorite people and I will tell the bride what they start at or what their approximate pricing is so that then it's on her to determine whether or not she should reach out to somebody who cost X, Y, and Z. So that's pretty much how I do my vendor referrals. I do not operate on a kickback system. I personally think that that is not okay. Um, there are vendors in this industry who if they send you a wedding, they expect you to cut them a check. I don't think that's right because if I were to work with that vendor, I would probably have to end up charging my client more just to be able to afford that referral fee, which could sometimes be hundreds of dollars. Um, but I really want people referring me because they love me, they love my work, they know I'm gonna do a wonderful job for their clients, their clients are gonna be stoked that they referred me, and I don't want to be referred based on money that I send to them. That feels cold to me and that feels like a gross business transaction. It does not feel like an organic relationship and that is what I am all about. So I do not get payments from any of the vendors that I refer out. Um, I would not even feel comfortable accepting that. If they offered, I would say, hey, just put that money into the client's flowers. If you wanted to give me like $500 for somebody's wedding, like yeah, I would love that, but also I would rather you just put $500 extra worth of flowers and then we get really awesome photos and it's just a little bit more cool for your client and it's great for being published too. So that would be kind of how I would operate. Um, I always feel like it's better to go above and beyond for the client rather than to take things for yourself. So that's just my philosophy. Other people might enjoy the kickback system, but just know that if there are kickbacks involved, it's possible that vendors are charging you more to be able to afford the other vendors um, referral fees. That's a thing that happens in certain cities. I don't think it's nearly as common as it used to be. Most people I know don't do that and I only know of very, very few people, like maybe um, two businesses out of like the hundreds plus businesses that I know that actually work on a referral fee system. Um, but I'm not trying to knock it, I'm not trying to disrespect it. I just personally don't really jive with that. But I hope that this gives you guys some insight into how vendor referrals work and know that if you want really personalized referrals, um, that's not something that is automatically offered by people. I do that for my brides. Um, again, I am more of a luxury photographer. I am very service-based. I don't just give photos and be done with it. I do a lot of hands-on work with my brides and research and I charge accordingly and my brides appreciate that. Um, but some vendors will charge you additional, like if you have a planner for only day of coordination, they might have a list that they can give you, but they're probably not, and you should check on this, going to give you very personalized vendor recommendations and reach out to those vendors, make sure they're available, blah, blah, blah. So it's just sort of a bigger thing. I think sometimes it's expected that everybody's gonna give you referrals that are personalized, but we can't always do that. Again, I will do that for people who hire me. I cannot really do that for brides that don't hire me because I can't really be spending hours working on a bride who then does not hire me. That's a lot of time wasted and time that's not spent on my couples who did book me. So anyways, that is pretty much it for vendor referrals. If you guys have any future video ideas, please be sure to leave them down in the comments below and I will definitely try to make them in the future. See you guys later, bye.